What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Canadian Football Fantasy Fix. I'm Ryan Coop here with your Week 9 CFL Fantasy Recap. Uh, as Week 9 is officially in the books and we take a look ahead to Week number 10, first we got to look back at the scores from the previous week. Uh, quick note on the games this week for Week 10 and my content related to it. Uh, the first game of the week comes on Wednesday between Toronto and Ottawa. Uh, so I will have all of your positional previews out on Tuesday this week. Then I'll have a depth chart update out uh, on Wednesday for that game. And then further depth chart updates later in the week for the other games on the schedule as well. So stay tuned for that. And if you're setting your lineups for week number 10, also note that uh, the Argos and the Red Blacks play twice this week each. And uh, their, their point totals from both games will count. Uh, and you can see the uh, the prices for the, uh, a lot of their players have been inflated accordingly. So should make an interesting week for lineup decisions. So stay tuned for all the previews out on Tuesday as I'll go through all of the potential decisions involved with that. But let's take a look back at week number nine in CFL Fantasy. Let's start with the quarterback position. Uh, at the top of the charts, it's Caleb Evans of the Ottawa Red Blacks making his CFL debut. Um, I Huge day for him. They come out flying early in that one with a couple touchdowns. Uh, and he has a very solid game in his CFL debut. And uh, solid game for the Red Blacks in general as they pick up their second win of the season. 25.5 points from Evans. He was a cheap option at quarterback. If you picked him, you got well worth your money for putting him in your lineup. Uh, you also got worth your money if you took Zach Caleros, who... Had not had a 300-yard passing game on the year coming in, but uh, exploded for 400 yards. Uh, what a day for Caleros and that Bombers offense. 24.7 points for him. Taylor Cornelius of the Elks getting his second career start in the CFL. Uh, a nice day for him, 22.6 points, but a couple touchdowns, over 300 yards passing. Did have a few interceptions, though, uh, and the Elks do not pull out the win. But Cornelius, if you took him in CFL Fantasy, you got full value out of him, at least two and a half points per thousand dollars. Vernon Adams Jr., Bo Levi Mitchell, Cody Fajardo, Jeremiah Mazzoli, and Michael Riley round out the rest of your starters. Uh, no real spe spectacular games out of any of them. You know, Vernon Adams, we know he's capable of putting up over 20 points on a week but was not able to do so. Bo Levi Mitchell, a nice little bounce back for him to get things going a little bit more offensively, and they pick up the win over the Riders. Uh, frustrating day for Cody Fajardo and Michael Riley, both putting up underwhelming numbers for their price points. And uh, Jeremiah Mazzoli, still not really getting, uh, getting underway this season. Seems like he's been struggling a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it's the injuries or what. Uh, but just 10.6 points if you took Mazzoli this week. And you can see here a couple of the backups as well. Sean McGuire got in for a uh, rushing touchdown. Uh, Matt Schiltz came in for six and put up 6.4 points uh, while Vernon Adams left part of the game due to injury. And then you have a couple backups with a few plays here and there. Looking at the running back side of things, if you took William Powell this week, you got your full value out of him. 21.6 points, uh, a great day for Powell, both on the ground and through the air. And he picked up a touchdown as well to give you 21.6. If you took James Wilder Jr., expecting him to go off on the Red Blacks, uh, that did not happen uh, quite as much as expected. Still a decent game from him, but at his price point, 14.9 was not quite what you were looking for. Uh, you definitely wanted something over 20 and around the 25-point range. Uh, if you went with Timothy Flanders of the Ottawa Red Blacks, you got your full value there. A nice day for him. He picked up a touchdown. He had a solid day on the ground as well. 14.1 points for Timothy Flanders. Uh, William Stanback, 12.3. Andrew Harris, 11.3. A couple of great running backs that just really didn't get involved enough in the passing game or pick up touchdowns. Uh, to help you pad those totals there. Uh, Kadeem Carey, 10.9. Sean Thomas Erlington, 10.6. Uh, kind of middling numbers for those two. Not a bad day at the price point for Sean Thomas Erlington, but not quite the value you were looking for there. James Butler of BC putting up 8.4 points. That's pretty close to the full 2.5 points per $1,000. 
but BC just doesn't run the ball. They never do it. They they have five, ten carries a game, and I I don't know if I've seen a CFL team run the ball as little as BC does. Uh, Terry Williams picking up seven points, mostly just in the return game. Uh, Anthony Coombs, uh, just 5.1. I uh, thought maybe, you know, given that uh, Ottawa's quarterback, Caleb Evans, had such a good day that maybe Coombs would get more involved, but not the case. Just 5.1 from him. Jamal Morrow picking up 4.9 in the return game alone. And you can see a, a list of backups here getting in for a couple reps here and there. And then uh, lower down on the chart here, uh, Shaq Cooper of BC getting just one point. Uh, very disappointing if you decide to put him in your lineup against the Bombers defense. The depth chart did have James Butler as the starter and Cooper as the kick returner, but they did the week before as well. And, uh, well, the Cooper got the most of the reps and had himself like a 16-point week the week before. So... People may have taken a chance on Shaq Cooper, and if so, it did not work out with only one point. And rounding out the running backs, uh, you can see notable here, uh, Jackson Bennett, Malik Irons. Sometimes they get in for plays for the Ticats. They did not this week. Zero points for them. And uh, Ante Milanovic, Litre, if you're taking him at a $3,000 value play, hoping he got in for a couple reps, I believe he got in for one, and it went for negative yardage. So you would have gotten negative 0.2 points, which uh, is a disaster, if I do say so, uh, from a CFL fantasy pick. Uh, looking at the wide receivers, we have Kenny Lawler of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, over 200 yards on the day. Uh, definitely the best game of his career, and arguably, uh, I believe it's the best uh, point total out of anybody yet on the season. 38.5 points for Lawler. Uh, if you went with Greg Ellingson or Shy Ross of the Elks, you've got over 23 points from both of those and full value. Uh, Shy Ross, hit you hit the nail on the head if you put him in your lineup. Uh, $2,500 value play, 23.5 points. Yeah, that's going to help your lineup real nice. Uh, Eugene Lewis puts over 20 points again, but not quite hitting full value there. A nice day for Ryan Davis of the Red Blacks. 18.2 for him gives you the full bang for your buck there. Jake Wynicke gets another touchdown. That's no surprise. 17.1 uh, points for him. Braylon Addison's first game in the Thai Cats lineup uh, of the season. 17 points. Uh, not a bad day for Addison, but his price point is over $10,000. And uh, it's going to have to come down, or he's going to have to put higher numbers than that to be worth putting in your lineup. Uh, big surprise here. Sean Bain of the Calgary Stampeders. A great day for him. 16.2 points. I believe on the depth chart coming into the week, he was listed as a backup, uh, but he did get involved in the offense uh, and I think even in the return game. So a nice 16.2 point day. If you, for whatever reason, took a chance on putting him in your lineup at $2,500. Uh, Devontae Deadman, look, he's my favorite player in the CFL right now. I, I think it's no question. I love how electric this guy is. He returned he, over 250 yards and returns once again. And a big return touchdown for the second game in a row. 16 points for Deadman, putting up the full value once again this week. Keon Schaefer-Baker of the Riders also gave full value at 15.7 points. Uh, he, uh, I think he had one long touchdown. Uh, or maybe not a touchdown. One long catch that led to, I think, William Powell touchdown that really put him over the top. Uh, Brian Burnham, 15.2. Kyron Moore, 14.6. Uh, good numbers, but not quite at the price point that you got them at. Malik Henry coming back into the Stampeders lineup for the first time uh, in the past, I believe, six weeks. Uh, he was on the six-game injured list. He uh, handled return duties. He got involved in the offense. He picked up a touchdown as well. I'm excited to see what he can do uh, if he gets another shot uh, going forward in that starting offense. Kenny Stafford and R.J. Harris, a couple red blacks, also giving you full value this week. 12.4 and 12 points out of them. Uh, Quan Bray of the Montreal Alouettes puts in 11. Uh, Nick Dembski puts in 11.8. Rasheed Bailey, 11.3. Yes, I'm realizing now on the screen in front of you, those are not quite in order. I'm not sure what happened with that, uh, but middling days for uh, Quan Bray and a couple bomber receivers. 
Uh, getting into the, uh, the lower end of things here, uh, Drew Wallatarski of the Bombers gave you full value with 10.8 points. He got a lot of receptions in that game, but did leave the game due to injury. Uh, Stephen Dunbar Jr. also giving full value uh, for the Ticats at 10.5. Tavon Smith got into the starting role this week for the Elks, put up 9.8. Keon Hatcher uh, still once again putting up good value at 9.4 points. Uh, as a $2,500 value play. Javon Katoy, 8.5. Mark Keith Ambles, 7.8. Uh, expected more out of Ambles, given that no Kamar Jordan and Josh Huff this week. But a uh, disappointing day uh, from him at over a $7,000 salary. BJ Cunningham, Tim White, both putting up 7.4 points. I uh, heard you, Mayala, 6.7. Uh, and the last one to put up the full value was Ricardo Lewis, who put up just over the value you needed as a uh, full-on $2,500 value play. 6.4 points for him. Brandon Banks came back into the lineup this week, but uh, at over $10,000 was a disappointment once again with just 6.2 fantasy points. Jalen Acklin putting up the same total. Uh, disappointment of Dur from Darrell Walker. Uh, 6.1 is not going to cut it at his salary. Same thing with Darvin Adams at 4.3. Uh, Bomber return man Janarian Grant's first game back in the lineup puts up 4.4. Not too bad uh, for a $2,500 value play, especially against a BC team that I feel like is pretty good on the punt coverage normally. Uh, Jacob Scarfoni, 4.3 points. He got into that game a little bit uh, with the injury to Lucky Whitehead for BC. Uh, Brayden Lenius, 2.9. Dan Williams, the third, 2.7. Uh, David Unger getting in, uh, handling a mostly return duties, 2.5 points for him. Uh, Richie Sandani, 1.8. Lamar Durant's first game back in the BC lineup puts up just 1.8 points. Uh, he didn't get a ton of usage, and their offense was shut down quite a bit. And the biggest letdown of the week by far, Lucky White had 0.1 points. Uh, he had one catch, or one run, I think it was a rushing play and then went down due to injury and you know has a I think it's a broken wrist they're saying at this point or a broken hand and he tried to come back later in the game but was really just a decoy player he uh they weren't throwing them him the ball and the one time they did he tried to catch it one-handed because he could barely use his hand so real unfortunate day if you had lucky whitehead in your lineup at the salary he came at to put up just the 0.1 points but Hey, injuries are something you can't predict, and uh, they are an unfortunate part of a CFL fantasy week. A uh, couple red blacks, Daniel Peterman, Nate Bahar putting up zero points. That surprised me. I thought he was going to be a, one of the best value plays of the week, uh, consistently getting a lot of targets for Ottawa, but uh, none this week. Zero points for Bahar. Uh, also, Mike Jones of the Edmonton Elks, uh, big surprise this week as well, was zero points on the board. He had one target his way. And did not catch it. Uh, Jalen Tolliver, Colton Hunchak also putting up zero points on the week. Uh, looking at the defensive side of things, uh, a couple of defenses. Uh, it, it looks like I forgot to highlight them here in uh, green for you. But uh, I can tell you that a couple of defenses did put up the full value for you this week. Uh, the Winnipeg defense was close. Uh, 12 points. They needed 12.8. Uh, that's pretty close, though. Uh, Ottawa's defense putting up a great day with 10 points. Uh, I don't know what it is about facing Edmonton, but uh, the the Red Blacks have 29 fantasy points in two games uh, on defense against the Elks and three fantasy points in their other five. So make of that what you will. Uh, maybe don't just maybe don't go the Red Blacks direction just based off of this performance against Edmonton. Uh, Montreal's defense putting up full value at 9 points. Hamilton, a nice day with 9, but not quite. You wanted 11 out of them. Uh, Calgary and Saskatchewan putting up 5 points. BC putting up 3. And um, a lot of people had Edmonton's defense facing Ottawa because that seemed to be the general trend. Pick the defense going against the Red Blacks. And uh, if you did, you got 0 points out of it. Uh, nothing going for you from the Elks' defense. So that's how all the players did this week. What would my fantasy lineup look like? Well, uh, not as good of the week this week as the past couple. 74.1 points for myself. 
Uh, I feel like it started decently well. You know, Taylor Cornelius, 22.6. That's a nice game from him. Uh, James Wilder, not the full value I was looking for, but 15 points is still a decent floor. And then Devontae Dedman hitting full value with 16. Uh, but the Elks defense being a big disappointment with zero points on the board. Uh, and then we move along through the week. I did, unfortunately, was one of the ones who uh, who got hurt by Lucky Whitehead's injury at 0.1 points, uh, which really hurt uh, the fantasy total this week. Uh, Jamal Morrow putting up 4.9. I ended up going with him as a cheap return man option. Uh, I needed 6.3 out of him, got 4.9. It's pretty close. I'll take it. Uh, Keon Schaefer Baker giving full value at 15.7 there as well. So, uh, what could have been if Lucky Whitehead had himself a good day? You know, if he was in for the full game, uh, he puts up a 20 point week. I'm in the 90s, I'm close to 100. So, uh, overall, you know, not a bad week, a tough break from the injury standpoint. Uh, how did your CFL Fantasy Week go? Let me know in the comments section or tweet at me, uh, at CooperTrooper42 on Twitter. Uh, I'd love to know how your week went. Hopefully, it was a little more successful than mine was. Uh, stay tuned for all of the Week 10 positional previews out on Tuesday, as I mentioned before, and depth chart updates throughout the week. Do all the YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you like, what you didn't. If you have any fantasy questions, put them in the comments section, tweet them at me, at CooperTrooper42 on Twitter. The link's in the description. Uh, and if you want to play CFL Fantasy alongside myself and other viewers, uh, check out a link in the description as well to the Canadian Football Fantasy Fix League over on the official CFL Fantasy site. Play alongside myself and others this week and every week throughout the 2021 CFL season. As always, thanks for watching. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.